Hello Australia, you're probably wondering where we are. We're outside the studio here at Side, where we record the couch every week in Leadable. I'm with Kate from Need Ideas. We've got Monster, Monster Ball, is that what we're calling? That's right. Monster Ball, and we've got the Zorb Ball behind us. There was a fun fest that was held today for Need Ideas. We're going to talk about that and much more. Variety Youth Choir are going to open the show. Stick around, 528, coming your way now. It's showtime on a couch. Yeah, it's showtime on a couch. I just don't think I'm going to fit in. Uh, yeah, thank you, Tony. That was enjoyable, but no, I don't think I'm going to fit into that hole. Very tight hole, the Zorg ball. Stick around, we'll tell you more about it. I'm not getting in there, but the Variety Youth Choir are opening the couch now, and then I'll meet you back out here to talk to Kate soon. Can you feel it? Now it's coming back, we can see it. If we bridge this gap, I can see you Through the curtains of the waterfall When I lost it, yeah, you held my hand But I tossed it, didn't understand You were waiting as I dove into the waterfall So say, Geronimo, say, Geronimo, say Geronimo, say Geronimo, say Geronimo. 
Variety Youth Choir opening the show. They'll be back at the end of the show to close the show. Don't forget, if you haven't bought one of their lottery tickets, there's still time. It is the varietylottery.com.au is their website. 100 bucks, you can win a million dollar house, or you can just take the million bucks. You know what I'm going to go for, the million bucks. Please support them. They do a wonderful job. They are the children's charity and they are Variety. Somebody else that does a wonderful job for kids and many more things is Need Ideas. With, yeah. with me today, I can't get her to go into the ball, is Kate, <laughs> Kate Bartram. Thank you for That's coming right. in today. No, no worries. I'm now, so excited. I noticed your dad stands on the side there because he didn't want to have a go in the ball. Oh, my goodness. We should have pushed him yeah, in. Yeah, I reckon we should that have That would have been well. a great shot. I would have helped you. Just kicked him. Oh, I tell you what, we could have just kicked him anyway, not to actually put him in the ball. That would have been... No, you had a wonderful day today. You we had did. the fun fest. That's right. That was held in Perth today. Tell me a little bit about Need Ideas. What are you all about? Okay, well, I guess we can start by saying we're a family-run business. Mm -hmm. um, Dad started a long time back, 25, almost 30 years now. Um, we create Move wonderful... The hair off your mic. There you go. Thank you. We create wonderful events for families predominantly, lots mm. of little children, just having a good time, trying new things, playing with snakes Why and other animals. Why do we need that in Perth? Is it because we're such a boring state that nobody does anything that John and yourself have come up with these great ideas? Why do we think that we need this in Perth? Well, I don't I think Perth's boring. I love Perth. I think we've got lots out there. But what we do is really unique and special. We create high quality events for families that are at really low prices. Because there's not many enjoys. of them, is there? No, so that's it's a right. Great, a great initiative that you're actually I think running. So. Yeah. Because there's a lot to do, like concerts now in Perth, there's a lot of festivals, mm. but there isn't a lot of fun days where people no. can go as a family and just have a, a damn good day. And that's the best thing about what we do. Once you pay for your ticket, everything else is always free. So you don't have to get your wallet out and keep paying for rides as you go. Once you're mm. there, just run and go crazy and enjoy everything. Are we expecting any more fun days, the family fun days, to come up throughout yeah. the year? Is it more a summer thing, a winter thing? When are, we get, when are we expecting the next one? Is it Christmas well, The maybe? next big one will be Christmas. We've run this event for, what, 25 years now? And the best part about the Christmas event is that we've had families that started coming 25 years ago. Yep. They've d then gone on to have children themselves, and now they're bringing their children to this event. Wonderful. So it's a really special day. So we want people to get on board. Now, with Need Ideas, can people just check out your website to find out when the next event is? Absolutely. What's the website? www.needideas.com.au Need Ideas. Com.au. Now right. you've got a fantastic event called Magic Mike Movie Night. Magic What's that Mike. all about? I'm particularly excited about this one. This one's more for the adults rather than the kids. Leave the kids behind. Well, I did offer to be the, the model for this, but for some reason they said I didn't quite fit the mould. Hmm. Well, we do have plenty of models that will be there on the night. We've got some great dancers mm -hmm. that will be putting on a show for the for the adults and you entertaining got everyone. Tatum? Well, I'm, you know, fingers crossing. I wrote him a letter saying, please come Have to the Neat Ideas Perth event. What do you reckon? You I got think you've got it side. going on. I reckon I could pass as Chan and Tatum. I reckon you could. Okay, I'd pay to you, see look, that. you look pretty serious. <laughs> yeah, right. So, what, how much is it going to cost us to go to this event? How much is it going to cost? <laughs> Tag, call it out, John. $15. 15 bucks. And that's it. It's John, just you didn't, a regular movie John ticket. didn't even add my commission on that. <laughs> 15 bucks, 15 top bucks. shelf review, That's he right. says. Yep. And Premier a event. And prizes. And prizes. prizes. What can you win, John? Uh, Heaps of prizes. Lots of prizes. Lots of prizes. A we date with about... you. Oh, Maybe. really? Well, Maybe. I'm Channel. looking forward to that. Maybe I can work on stage with Shannon and that all that sort of thing. That sounds really good. I could be Magic Mike 3. <laughs> Check that out on needideas.com.au. Right. It's going to be a fantastic night. Heaps of prizes, heaps of special guests, and heaps of events to, to partake, especially the prizes. Yeah. What else is happening with Need Ideas? What else do you guys do? Well, I think the biggest event is coming up in, at Christmas now, the event we were just talking the about. Fest? The Fun oh, Fest? Santa's Christmas Carnival. Oh. So my favourite thing about that event is that Santa arrives a different way every single Do you need a new Santa? Because I've got one of our floor managers that could love to be your Santa. He looks like a terrific Santa. No, he's not, but he he'll have to He can roll on in in a monster ball. Well, yeah, he doesn't even need a suit. <laughs> I reckon he'd be quite well. What are we expecting at the, the Christmas Santa Day? In Christmas? Santa's Christmas yes, Carnival. That's the word. Uh, we take over the Claremont Showgrounds, the entire showgrounds. We bring in lots of big rides for the grown up kids and lots of little rides. We've got animal nurseries, um, 
snakes, uh, the Freedom Ferry experience that was at the uh, Kids Fun Fest today. The rodeo. The rodeo the we rodeo. bring in. That's a really exciting one because oh, we like don't horses. really get to see rodeos too no, often. And can people ride the horses? or the ho Because I remember when I was a kid, I used to go to the Hyde Park Festival. Yep. And until I got to about 20, 20 stone that is, they, they stopped letting me ride the horses. Oh my goodness. And I don't know why because I <laughs> thought the horses aren't scared of me. But Rodeo is something that you don't see no, right. in, in local no. metro area. You only see it in the country. Yeah. So that's going to be awesome. Yeah, it Does sure it will. cost anything for people to actually be part of Neat Ideas? Can people become a member and, and be up to date with everything that's going on? At this stage, uh, to be a member, Neat Ideas is absolutely free. Free? So basically, they could just check out your website. That's right. Have a look at the different events yep. that you guys are holding. You've got the Santa event in Christmas. Yep. You've got Magic Mike coming, coming up in up. July. And we do many more movie nights. Magic Mike's just the next one on the agenda. Just follow Neat Ideas. They're local, they're West Australian, and we'd love you to be supporting them as well, just like we are here at the couch. Thank you, Kate, for coming no in today. Are you going to get in the ball or not? Oh, I'll get in the ball. You reckon? <laughs> I can if you want me to. I reckon. Cameron <laughs> will probably enjoy that. We've got Cameron, one of our uh, entertainment reporters. We're trying to replace our crew now, of course, cutting back. But Cameron, if you can show us how it's done, and we've got Monster Come on. Mash yeah, over there. I'm just here to do the movies. Let's go for it. Let's have a Come look. Come on, at... get in there. Oh! oh! Well done. He makes it look so easy. Cameron, are you still alive? We're going to push him down this way. I should lie on the floor, maybe. <laughs> Oh, that worked really well. And here he is. Cameron's actually been pushed around by Monster Mash. Would you like me to help you? I mean, might miss an opportunity. I reckon it... Oh, that, that's the way. Cameron, how does it feel in there? Oh, this is fun. And they wanted me to go in there. Okay. That's a lot of fun. Kate, where are you? Come on over, Kate. That is a Zorb ball and a lot of fun. Now is oh! Okay, Kate, we need to we need to promote the fantastic Monster Ball. Tell yeah. me a little bit about them. Well, Monster Ball is a great WA-based company. Mm. They do Zorb Balls and more, Bouncy Castle, Spider Monkey. We use them at every event. They're great guys. Ben over here is the owner. He's having too much fun with Zorb Ball by the looks of it. They're trying to run us over, I think. <laughs> ben, you're having a lot of fun there! Yeah, I think if you wanted us to get in the ball, you could have just asked Ben. Fantastic. Thank you very much no for being part of it today. Good luck with all the events that you hold with Neat Ideas. Just a bit of fun. We'll take a break and be back with more of the couch. We need to go back into the studio. So please support Neat Ideas and we'll see you right after this break. Welcome back to the couch here on Aurora Television. I hope uh, you enjoyed that bit with the Zorb Ball and John and Neat Ideas. Please check out their website. They have a lot of fun and they've got heaps of events coming up around you here in WA. All right, now it's time to talk green. Cara's talking banks and I ask her, which bank? Over to you, Cara. Hello, and today we get to welcome Sara Sabiri from 350.org. Welcome to the couch, Sara. Hi, Cara. Thank hey. you so much. That's good. Thank you for coming on. Now, today we're talking about 350. Can you tell me a bit about your organisation? 350 is a climate campaign movement. We're, we're trying to address the climate crisis by keeping the temperatures below 2 degrees because that's a safe climate sits at. And 350 itself means 350 parts per million, which is the safe amount of ca carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Right now we're at 400 and we're trying to keep that below take that back to 350 parts per million again and um, one of our one of our strategies, strategies yeah. is, is divestment so um, which is trying to take your money out of the fossil fuel industry and putting it into renewables Okay, so where um, banks are investing into, say, coal mines and fracking, you can find out if that's where your money is going and you're getting people to work out if that's what's happening and then you divest your money into somewhere that's a bit more supportive towards the... Exactly, environment. because um, that's what 350 is about. It's about empowering people because not everyone has shares 
in the in the market. But we all have bank accounts. We all have, most of us have superannuations. So by finding out um, which banks actually invest in fossil fuels and taking our money out of them and putting in banks that don't invest in these fossil fuels, we're encouraging them to invest in renewables. Yeah, great. Yeah. It seems like you're really uh, hitting them where it hurts if you're going on the money level. And so have you had um, many successes with the divestment movement? Yeah, so in Perth itself, we've had the city of Fremantle divest. Yeah, so, right, the whole yeah. council. Yeah, exactly. And um, um, by divesting, we're encouraging, it's, we're creating a political wheel as well as um, company, encouraging companies to invest in renewables, which yeah. should be where the future is going because... Yeah. Absolutely, that's a big change between... Yeah. Um, yeah, so really keeping fossil fuels in the ground is the best way to keep um, the, the number low, yeah, the, yeah keeping the temperature low. To keep the temperature low. below yeah. two degrees, because even at two degrees, we're going to have catastrophic climate change. What's going to happen is we're going to have massive sea, sea level rise, we're going to have health problems that we're already having, and um, we're going to have a massive crisis. It can be Pacific Islands going underwater, it could be 100 metres of sea level rise and, um, yeah. Yeah, right. And so um, how can you find out if your bank and your investment um, is, is, is actually involved with some of these um, fossil um, industries? Yeah, so we work with market forces and market forces research is where, where the banks loan our money to. So um, you can have a look at their website and also 350.org.au. Great, okay. Yeah. And do you have many volunteers working for you to help this? Run? Oh, absolutely. We run, we run on volunteers and um, it's fantastic. Um, volunteers work in different areas. Um, they can hold stalls, they can write newsletters, they can help us write a blog. Yeah. Um, they can help us with um, actions and, our, and help us connecting with sister groups and making sure we're all involved and doing the right thing for the climate. Yeah, we've seen some great photos of, um, of the community getting together in some pretty um, beautiful places around Australia. There seems to be quite a, a lot of people um, committing to 350 these days. Yeah, so and we'd love to hear from more people and get more people involved because it's so important that we all are in the same boat and because climate change is going to affect everyone. It's just not me and you. It's just everyone, basically, and sure. the future depends on. And it seems like it's something that uh, people can do when uh, you're really looking at Exactly. The, um, it's yeah. empowering people because before I joined 350, it was for me, well, what am I going to do? Climate's changing, but really, uh, what can I do about it? So by joining 350, I have the option and it's showing me the way and we're telling the whole world that a different world as possible. Great. So if you wanted to find out more information on 350.org, you can head to the website, check out what 350 really means about this two degrees and what a difference that does make to our environment. They are running a whole lot of campaigns, including divestment, where you can see where your money goes in the bank. And if you wanted to commit your money towards fossil fuel industries, or if you can divert it to a bank who is investing in a more renewable energy source, you can also volunteer. They have a 2,000 strong people network um, already happening in Perth. Okay. Or Perth, in yeah. Perth alone. So look at around Australia, there's a lot more happening around. And if you want more information, you can head to 350.org.au. Great. And you can also head to the Couch website, thecouch.com.au mm -hmm. on the front page, or you can look on the segment guide. You'll find me smiling there under Talking Green. You can find out more information. We'd love to hear from you. And thank you so much, Sarah, for coming on the couch today. Thank you. Yay. And back to you, Fred. <laughs> Thank you very much, Cara. That's a great message. And of course, uh, it would be nice to see if the banks and super funds did invest some of, in some of their money in the green industry. And I've been told by my floor manager, Tony, that in the US, they're doing this with the super funds and they're making a lot of growth and a lot of money and all that sort of thing. So it can be done. All right, let me talk about something else that can be done. You can win a $50 voucher into this beautiful pasta, faster, pasta, pasta, faster, if you want to call it that way. If you haven't seen their new menus, check them out here. Introducing Faster Pasta's new lunch menu. Lunch the way I like it, please. Just choose your fresh pasta. Linguini. And your sauce. Fiorentina. From just $9.90, then add sides and drinks. Lunch the way you like it, for a price you love. Only at Faster Pasta.
and trust it from someone that's been there. You're going to love your lunch. It's a beautiful lunch. To win that, you win a $50 voucher to go and enjoy it. Send the word Faster Pasta that's on the screen at the moment. Faster Pasta. Spell it the way it is, not correctly. And send it to 0439 929 929. 0439 929 929. We must have your name and address on that SMS if you are in any chance of winning. And don't forget, spell it wrong. Faster Pasta. And you'll get it right that makes sense. Anyway, someone that always makes sense is our very own Grace Newton Woodsworth. And I think I got it right that time. Over to you, Grace. Actually, it's Wordsworth, but thanks, Brad. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll do that again. <laughs> Let me do it again. Time now to talk to someone that always gets it right, and that's our very own Grace. I won't bother with the surname. <laughs> thanks Over so you. much, Fred. That's right. Uh, Shall today, I do it again? You can... No, right. you're happy I think with that? You got that? it. Okay. You got it. Uh, today, we're here for our style segment with the wonderful Michelle Merzen who is the head of Pushing50.net. She's here. Thank you so much for being here today, Thanks Michelle. Thanks for having again. me again. It's great. It's great to see you again. Uh, can you tell us a bit about your whole vision with shopping on a budget and everything and also about your style and everything today? Okay, well, basically today what I did was I approached the Miller's store because I love their fashion and I just thought they've got so many different um, items of clothing that are very affordable. And I just wanted to style up some of their outfits and show people out there what we can do as far as making yourselves look great on a budget. So Miller's was wonderful and they gave myself and my beautiful model, Carolyn, a, a, a lot of clothes to show you today. So How exciting. That, that's what we're going to do today is show you. So this is from Miller's, this outfit here? Yes, this whole outfit's for Miller's. The um, shirt I purchased as a workwear shirt because I thought this is something that's very easy to wear to work and looks, you know, sort of classy and stylish for work. Mm. The pants also were from Miller's and again, they're very easy to wear. You can put a jacket with them or another blouse or something. And I decided to dress it up with the red accessories today just to make it yeah, a little bit gorgeous. more vibrant. Yeah, matching. Love the matching colours. Thank you. Um, can you tell us about like the price? Just to... Sure. The, the pants were only $25. Um, the shirt was $30. And all of my wow. accessories, again, I'm pretty savvy. Most of them are around about $3 each. I don't pay a lot for the accessories. Normally a Quip or Colette or Kmart, Big W, most of those places you'll find bargains for accessories all the time. So, so you look fabulous and you didn't even have to spend that much. No, you? not at all. No. It's, it's all about just finding the right pieces and, and just getting a few that you can collate together for a workwear look or something like that. And making and the most of your wardrobe. Yes, definitely. Um, speaking of that, your model that you have today, Carolyn, Yes. Um, can you tell us a bit about her outfit, as in what the outfits that you have planned to show us today? Carolyn, we have a workwear outfit for her as well. We chose something that was, again, um, a classic style, a, a jacket, a pair of pants and a blouse. Again, these can be swapped around. You could wear them with a, with a skirt or maybe wear the jacket over a dress or something like that. So it's all about just kind of like mixing and maxing, matching things around so you can get the most out of your wardrobe. Wonderful. Well, let's have a look at Carolyn's outfit because she's here today. So let's have a look at Carolyn now. Can you tell us a little bit about her outfit and what she is wearing? Sure. Carolyn's wearing this lovely pair of pants that were from the Miller's range. They're a very nice fit and the jacket also is a very nice tailored uh, black jacket. Ooh, the accessories necklace. that Carolyn's chosen are this gorgeous gold colour which really highlights the leopard print shirt she's wearing. If you just have a look at the back here, again, it's a lovely fit. Um, Beautiful the pants, fit. they are a, a really nice tailored look, so something that you could easily wear around the office without feeling uncomfortable or anything like that. So I, th I thought the jacket and pants were a really, really good style. Absolutely. It's a great look. Oh, and the, the shoes? Oh, the shoes were very nice too. These, Carolyn told me that they were purchased from Crossroads, so yeah, a lovely pair of shoes. And the shirt, it's, it's leopard print, it's interesting because that's coming back into fashion. Yes, size. actually leopard print is coming back into fashion and you can't go wrong with that, it's in, it's out, it's, it's one of those things that's always around, so yeah. I might have to start wearing leopard print. <laughs> <laughs> um, well that's great and we'll have a look at her other fit, outfit later because she's just gone to get changed. Sure. Um, but it would be wonderful to talk about what actually inspired you to, to get into this, what inspires you every day to... Just basically, when I talk to people, I find out that, you know, especially for myself, because I'm one of those people that tends to be a bit more overdressed than underdressed, they're always saying, oh, where do you get your outfits? And, you know, oh, how much did that cost? It must have cost a fortune. And it's like, it didn't cost a fortune. Most of the things are very, you know, affordable. So it's just to show people you can shop on a budget and look great. And can you talk about, like, things that inspired you, say, blogs or people or things like that? Sure. Actually, I just came across a New York photographer. His name is Ari Seth Cohen. 
and he has a blog called Advanced Style. Now, I was so amazed. I went onto the um, blog site to have a look, and he is a ph photographer that photographs uh, creative and stylish people in New York, but it's mainly older men and women, and he just loves to photograph anyone that's wearing anything really quirky, a little bit different. And so if there's anyone out there that wants to go and have a look at what other people are wearing, and, and if you're doubting your own style, don't, because once you get on there and have a look, it's amazing. I just, I loved it. I just, I just think the blog's Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Yeah. Fabulous. Okay, so you also said that people can send in photos of themselves to you? Yes, what well? I was thinking was if anyone out there is wanting to send in any inspirational photos of their mums, grandmas or anything like that, please send them through to, to me at michellemerdson at gmail.com. I'd love to put them up on the website. I think it would just be amazing to, to have that bit of a talk about people. And see other people's styles as well. Yeah, sure. And speaking of styles, what's your second outfit choice? For myself or... For, for Carolyn. For Carolyn. <laughs> Carolyn today, her outfit um, is a beautiful evening kind of wear. We thought we'd go with something a little bit more dressy. So it could either be for a, a lovely dinner out somewhere or maybe even for a wedding or something. So that's what we've chosen for Carolyn today. All right, so she's back. So let's have a little look at her next outfit. Can you tell us everything about this? This was a really beautiful dress and the colour at first is like wow, but when you it look at it, it is, it's really gorgeous. The black and the, and the limey yellow together is just really, really pretty. And um, it's a real standout, like a real statement kind of um, outfit. The, the jacket, um, again, is something that you could wear over a black dress, you could wear it with a pair of pants. It's just like such a vibrant colour and you could dress it up with a few other accessories as well. So mm. again, an overall beautiful outfit. So it is beautiful. It's just um, a lovely colour. And as you can see there, Carolyn's put the fascinator in her hair and that would be just gorgeous for a wedding or something if you wanted to dress it up a bit more. All of the accessories that Carolyn's got there, they're from Kmart and um, wow. all very affordable again. Speaking of affordability, this outfit, how much did this outfit cost? Uh, probably around about $85 for the dress for the and the jacket. Thing. Yeah, wow. that's all it was. So, yeah, very affordable. And must I mention again, Miller's is not for all older, um, more mature people. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at these outfits for myself and... I might go to Miller's. <laughs> Michelle, and I'm thinking... Can, sorry to interrupt, but there was a funny story about the Caroline outfit. What was it? Because you didn't get to tell it. Yeah, basically, Carolyn, yeah. she didn't want to try that on. We, we went into the into the Miller's store and we were kind of like rummaging around looking for the outfits and we saw that and the and the sales assistant also said, why don't you try this on? This is, this is really nice. And she sort of looked at me and said, oh, I don't know about that colour. It's a bit kind of bright. And I, I was going to try it myself, but they didn't have the right size. So I said, just humour me. Go in the fitting room and just try it on. <laughs> So she went in there and tried it on and came out and um, the manager said the same. It was just gorgeous. They loved it. So yeah, we, I think we did really well. <laughs> that often happens because people always judge things and they actually end up looking really good. Yeah, so, yes. definitely. Yeah, guys, I think, yeah. That's a wonderful story. I've got the accessories here just quickly. <laughs> I know we need to wrap it up. Well, these accessories, where are they available from? I didn't pinch them off, Caroline. I had a second set no. brought in. Realistically, you want to wear them, don't you? <laughs> I, I have yeah. worn them. I wore them last night. That one was from Casino. Kmart. Kmart, about yep. 20 bucks or something? No, only about $3. Oh, 3 bucks, but I want to make 20 on eBay. <laughs> and this one here? And the same, that was from Equip. Yep. That's just recently. So that one was only about $3 as well. How beautiful is that? They often do How a 3 beautiful. for 10 kind of range in their store, so it's great. Sorry we need to wrap it up because we're just about out of time. Can we just quickly flick through those photos that we've got that, ca that you brought in, Michelle, and just quickly go through them and tell us where you, where you actually recorded these, just quick. These the, were all on a photo is, shoot? This was a photo shoot that my brother, Michael Lindsay that McLean, did gorgeous, for me. That, that outfit. That's a throw that I bought from Miller's as well. And um, Why did you do this? This was basically, again, just to show people how you can put outfits together and they don't have to cost a lot of money. That's the outfit They're beautiful we clothes, today. they're good quality and... Um, I just, I just thought the photographs turned out beautifully and again I want to thank my brother for doing the photographs for us which we did around various parks around the area where I live. So, and yeah. can I just say to those people watching as well, Caroline, I've known Caroline for many, many years, she's not a model but she's done a bloody good job doing modelling I think. She's uh, my model, she's a new career. And that tells you how good you can look with the right, out, uh, right outfit isn't mm, it? Absolutely. Definitely. I'll let you wrap it up and give us the website and everything but yes. it, it was a wonderful thing to have in today. It was a wonderful thing to, to have you and, and, and see your wonderful outfits you've created. Thank can you. Can you tell everyone where people can go to see your website? Sure. If you just go to pushing50.net and you can see all of the outfits that we've done today as I'll be doing a blog on all of those. So um, yeah, just head on over to the website and if and you'd like to yeah. contact me or yeah, email, maybe yes. email me or if you'd like to book a styling session, just get in touch with me. That would be great.
Fabulous. Well, thank you so much for coming in today. And if you did miss any of that, please go to thecouch.com.au to check out more. Thank Thanks you very much. Thanks for having much. me. Thank you. <laughs> Back to you, Fred. Thank you very much, guys. And uh, that was, again, uh, Talking Style with uh, Michelle and our very own uh, Grace. I'm going to go out and maybe try some of these out myself with some of my outfits. We'll see you on the other side of this break with Di Wilcox uh, next. Welcome back to the couch here on Foxtel. Hope you're enjoying the show. Now, cyber safety is very much in the news these days, and to talk about that today and more is our very own Di Wilcox. Over to you. Thanks, Fred. Hi, everyone. It's lovely to see you again today. As part of many of the workshops I run, one of the workshops we uh, have just developed is a cyber safety workshop. And the reason we've had to develop this is because there's so many issues that parents are having with their children having technology in their bedrooms and parents not being aware of who they're speaking to. Now there's all sorts of nasty stories that we're hearing, but I'm pleased to say that today I'm talking with Luke O'Keefe from Coda Chat, and Coda Chat has come up with a solution for parents. Hi Luke, how are you? Hi Di, I'm good thanks. Thanks for coming in today. No worries. Could you tell us a little bit about what Coda Chat is and how it will help parents and their children. Yeah, great. Um, Coda Chat is a supervised chat app that includes parents in the process. So right now, social media a lot of times is not age appropriate for kids from 7 to 12. And some of the things they'll experience on those platforms will stay with them um, and can be quite negative. So a lot of parents have been extremely concerned about how to deal with that. And so through our own journey with, our own, with my own kids, um, I sought to find a platform that allowed parents to in the same way they would in the physical world, be able to supervise their kids in the digital world. You know, what I, I, what I know about Coda Chat is that um, I can create a community around my two children mm -hmm. so I know who they are contacting on the telephone. But it's not, it's not for teenagers just yet, is it? No, not just yet. Right now it is aimed at that 7 to 12 year old um, bracket because kids are wanting to use it at a far younger age than you know, we would have been aware of at our age. So kids are using iPads at two. Yeah, exactly right. So you have to, you have to move with kids on that and a lot of parents feel challenged that they're not tech savvy enough and so we're able to bring them in the process that they from the beginning point approve the friendships so both you and I as parents would approve the friendships of our kids and close that community so anyone who's got untoward ideas of wanting to chat to our kids wouldn't be able to. And that's a massive incentive and, the, and where I see the greatest benefit I think is you know we wouldn't put our children in a car and say off you go. Mm -hmm. we, we give them that whole learning experience and um, we need to do the same with when it comes to technology yet yeah. we, we tend to give them a piece of technology and put them in their bedrooms. Yeah that's right I mean I think we want a platform that allows us to positively prepare our kids for the future. Um, any parent who's engaged and wants to develop their kid to be a beneficial member of society um, and, and healthy wants to be able to do that and, and sometimes we are restricted from doing that so this allows that to take place. You know one of the main issues that um, I'm hearing more and more about is actually cyber bullying mm. where kids are being bullied um, they, they, not just in school they'll come home from school and because technology is with them 24-7 yeah. these kids are being constantly harassed. How will Coda Chat help those kids? Yeah the way we've put it in is to create a a uh, part of the app that is uh, allows parents to review the chat history. So it's not so much to spy on your kids, but so often with social media, if something's happening and you're not involved in that, you don't even know that it's taking place. So being able to review the chat history, um, see that it might be taking place, already being friends with the, with the other parent, mm. you're able to have a conversation around that, um, not only with the parent, but with the kids, and develop some resilience and some pathways forward in how to deal with that. I think what I love is that you're saying to parents, you know what, you need to take some responsibility here in, give, in watching what your children are doing. Mm. And I think sometimes it's far too easy to palm that off and say it's all too hard. Mm. But Coda Chat's giving us a solution now so that we can be aware of who our children are in contact with. Yeah, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for parents to be able to do that. Um, so that's not a hard process, but one that can be easily achieved. I've had a lot of parents um, when I've spoken in workshops who've said to me, but what about my child's safety? Uh, or not even safety, privacy. Mm. Um, what are you doing? And I say, you know, I've got to be my child. First of all, I'm her parent and I'll be her friend when she's 21. Mm. But right now I need to guide her. So I'm really excited about Coda Chat having an eight-year-old. So I'll be able to use this mm. with my eight-year-old. And at this point, Coda Chat's 
to 12 years of age? Yeah, around 12. I mean, it's up to parents to decide um, for each and every kid. We understand that parents are different in, in what they choose and know what level their kid's emotional intelligence is at. But that's where we've aimed it at. And then hopefully we'll build the next stage moving forward. I hope you get a teenage one out really, really soon so uh, my daughter can use it. Yeah. That's fantastic. So, Luke, if people want to get hold of Code Chat, um, whereabouts can they find you? Yeah, we're in the iTunes store at this present time, but they could also go to our website, codechat.com and um, that will give them all the information of how to find that. That's fantastic. And um, in case you, you, you've missed that, you can actually go to uh, diewilcox.com.au or you can go to thecouch.com.au to find out more information. Thank you so much, Luke, for coming in today. No worries. Thanks for having and, me. And um, back to you, Fred. Thank you very much. You know what, Cyber, can I just say, it sounds like a fantastic program, but you are so passionate for people who haven't caught you yet Mm. Let's just tell people quickly. Yeah. Di, what's your passion? Because you're into parenting, but you do a lot more than just parenting. I do. I do workshops for parents and for children. And my passion is, is that there are so many issues affecting our children. Um, in school, they're not going to focus on the academic if they've got all these worries bombarding them. So um, the idea of the workshops that I run is that I give kids strategies, very simple, easy to use strategies to deal with these overarching problems. So that then when they're in the classroom, they can focus on the academic. And um, for me, that social emotional intelligence is just so important so our kids feel to have that confidence and resilience. So over the next few months we're going to learn a lot from you. You are going to learn so oh, There are so many issues I'm passionate about as you can tell. Yep. It's hard to shut me up. So thank you so much for, for having hey, me on Fred. You found a good match Di. <laughs> Trust me. Can I, Luke, just quickly, my, I've got a couple of, I know we're running out of time, but my, I've got a couple of nephews and nieces. Kids now, you, you're right, they're on the computers so much now. Mm. I've got a nephew that sits in his room on a 60-inch TV playing these computer games and, and talking to people on the headsets. Mm. And I say to my sister all the time, how can he be talking to randoms that he doesn't mm. even know? And they go, oh, yeah, he would know them, and he talks to them, and they're in Melbourne, and we're in Perth. And I'm like, do parents need to be aware of stuff like mm. this, or are they too blasé? Are we too trusting these days? I think it's a combination of many things. I think we are trusting, um, and sometimes we're just not aware of what can take place on those platforms. And if we're not aware, then we're more inclined to go, okay, that's fine, you, you go ahead and do that. Um, I think the scary thing, though, is, Fred, is that a child could think they're talking to another 12-year-old when Correct. in actual fact they're yeah. talking yeah. to a 42-year-old. Um, yep. You don't know who's on the other side of that screen, and that's why we need to teach our kids that responsibility. Cyber safety, I think, is a big concern. I think it'd be awesome to have courses to train parents, mm. and I think parents need to be taught how it all works. Because well, Fred, you yeah. can come to my in, end of I October. Will we will have one running. I'm not a parent. And you, but well, it doesn't matter. You can oh. still come along and help your nephew. Yeah. I'll keep that in mind. But you know what? It's going to be interesting. Don't forget, to, uh, for more information, check out Di's website, diewilcox.com.au. Any of those details is on our website as well. But if you want more information, what better way than watching the contact promo? Here it is. If you're looking for more info on anything you've seen on today's show, head to thecouch.com.au. It's where you'll find all the links for our guests, plus clips from the show, backstage photos, and even exclusive movie reviews. You can also sign up as a couchie and be part of our competitions, including Spin It to Win It. New Zealand viewers, that's open to you too. So jump online and check it out now. Thecouch.com.au Cyber safety, a very big issue, and I was talking to Dr Jenny while we were watching that as well, that interview. Dr Jenny, welcome back to The Couch. Thank you so much, Fred. Uh, Great Dr. to be here. Dr. Brainfit. Now, you were talking about cyber safety as well. It's very mm. important uh, that kids are, are well monitored and parents you know, know yeah. how it all works. Yes. But today, we're actually not going to be talking about cyber safety. We're going to talk about sleep. That's right. And this is a cause because kids are on computers too long. <laughs> so I was, that's my segue. <laughs> kids staying on electronic devices for too long, meaning they don't get enough sleep. Mm. Why is sleep really important to us? Well, sleep has been a bit of a mystery for a long time, but we now understand a lot more about why we all sleep. And we know that sleep is really important for forming long-term memory. So when we talk about long-term memory, yep. what does that mean? It means um, those sort of things that we're going to keep for later on, because a lot of stuff we're just dealing with on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. But like, you know, kids go to school to learn information and they have to be able to then, in a test or an exam, remember that information. And we do that ourselves in lots of different situations So too. we're talking about things that you need to keep for knowledge and to make us grow and experience, and, experience yes. and all that sort of, yes. sort of thing. Yeah. We need to sleep. Is there an amount of sleep that we should be getting per night? 
on average? Yeah, and that again depends on age. Mm. The average adult needs around about eight to nine hours. And children? Children need longer. Really? Yes, and teenagers especially need a lot of sleep. So it's pretty good when parents put the kids away or put them to sleep when and the fat cat. Away, yes. I say put them away <laughs> when fat cat comes on and says good night at six o'clock. We used yes. to say, oh, I don't want to go to bed. It's not dark yet. Yeah, that's right. It's, they need that sleep. It's really important, and especially for kids because it's essential for normal brain development. And a lot of experts are now worried that because. All of us are not getting as much sleep as we always need. Mm. It's actually impairing our ability to function well. And for kids, it actually can so slow down their brain development. So it's really, really critical. So forming a long-term memory is really important. That's We've important, that because yes. Of experience yep. and yep. learning and future yep. knowledge and making yep. us grow. Uh, brain uh, flushes out the waste. How, what's that all about? The brain flushes out waste. What waste? Because I didn't <laughs> think we went to the toilet with our brain. <laughs> It's an interesting concept, isn't it? Is. it? Yeah. The brain's really, really metabolic, metabolically active, mm. so it creates a lot of waste products. And at night time, um, that's the time that the brain actually does flush out all these sort of waste so items all, that all we don't the stuff need. stuff we don't need. Yes. And if we don't get enough sleep, the waste isn't eliminated. And the thinking is that if you get an accumulation of waste, you know, if you imagine all your pipes sort of mm. building up a mm. bit of a crust or something inside. It could be linked to the problem that we see in later life with those conditions like Alzheimer's okay. um, disease or other problems. Let me give you an thinking. example. Say someone is stressed about their financial or employment situation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That goes around, you know, we say oh. it goes around your mind and yes. around your brain. Yeah. Is that the type of stuff we want to try and get rid of? Yes. I think a lot of people who have sleep difficulty mm. and they reckon that over a third of the population have some form of sleep issue, worry is, is one of the biggest plagues because we lie there and we're replaying that worry over and over like a broken record. And of course, the more we disturb our sleep and fragment our sleep, the harder it is to function the following day. So when someone is stressed or constantly thinking about something in their mind, mm. what's the best way for them to say, I've got to get this off so I can go to sleep, I need my sleep for work tomorrow? How do they do that? It's, it's difficult and it's different for every single person. Some people find it easy to sort of jot some of the worries down so that it actually sort of clears the mind before they go to I sleep. I do that. I make do a you? list of uh, pros and cons. Yes. And if, yes. The, if the, the reason to get rid of that issue is more important than the one to keep it, mm. I know I've lost the issue. Yeah. I, yeah. I look at what overweighs. Yeah. But that's just like one technique. You write them down. Mm. Mm. Um, the other thing I wanted to know is there's another benefit, regulating emotions. When we talk mm. about regulating emotions, what, are, what emotions are we talking about? Well, emotion ranges from sort of extreme negativity to extreme positivity. So it goes from real sad, anger, frustration to elation, joy, wonderment. Mm. And that's normal to experience those. But when we're sleep deprived, yeah. we tend to veer to the negative. So, I mean, if you've ever seen a two-year-old who's deprived of sleep, oh, tantrum. <laughs> and you know they're throwing tantrums, they're lying on the floor, kicking and screaming. They don't and want to eat anything. No, oh, someone missed their nap today or didn't get enough sleep at night. And it's the same for us as adults. Grumpy. Yes, we turn up a little bit grumpy and irritable and we start to see the world in a more greyish light. Everything starts to take on that lower hue and we become more prone or at risk of anxiety or even depression. Do we find that the, the older age group of people suffer more from sleep deprivation than the young people? That's, that's hard to say. Do you, do you know as a doctor that if there is some sort of research that's done where, like I, I would think a young person, mm. The world's pretty easy when you're young because your parents are looking after the finances, the parents send you to school. <laughs> do kids worry? Do kids... Kids do worry. In fact, the stats tell us that mm. even little kids, primary school kids, are suffering from high, high levels of anxiety today at a level we've never seen before. And I think it's because we've got high levels of expectations of them and mm. they put it on themselves as well. And we've got all these other things like our technology and social media, and they all add to that level of anxiety. Because I remember when I, when I was younger, parents always used to say, keep them busy, let them run around because they'll tire out and go to bed. That's, I think that's the difference. Um, I think so often we don't let our kids go outside and just play and just be interacting with the environment. They tend to be inside more mm. and interacting on computers, on computers and Facebook. laptops. Yep more. The last mm. one I want to touch on is mood because apparently if we don't have a lot of sleep or mm. it may affect our mood. Yes. Now I know my dad's 80, I was saying to you off air, 
he's 80 years old and when he doesn't get to sleep a lot at mm. night, he's very grumpy and moody in the morning. Mm. Mm. And you think, oh, geez, I'm not going to come and visit you for a couple <laughs> of days. Right. Sleep? Not, is, that, is that a reason for mood? mood it swings? is absolutely a reason for mood. And we know that a lot of people who suffer from things like depression, who may end up having to see their doctor and may mm. get prescribed an antidepressant, they'll often have sleep disturbance. If you can deal with that sleep disturbance first, then the symptoms of depression start to lift. Yes, we're and they talking, feel better oh, about this themselves. This is something I, I've always thought that we tend to cure the symptoms, not the, the problem, what caused that's, the problem. That's right. And, and you're you're all for saying you don't need to take drugs to cure this. We should stop people taking prescription drugs. To I'm not stop. saying we should stop all, all drugs and not prescriptions. All of them, but we can avoid them. Um, but maybe if we were starting to address what could be causing the person mm. to have these symptoms in the first place and address something like sleep deprivation initially, we may be able to start with a lower dose of something or may not actually need that drug at all in the, in the So are we come. tending to always prescribe a cure rather than maybe look deeper and say, as family, as doctors in mm. general, society should be looking into the causes. And, and, and like I was saying to you, rather than prescribe me a tablet that will reduce my sugar level, mm. maybe look at my diet and say, Absolutely. if you can yeah. stop drinking yeah. Coke, yeah. you may actually not yeah. have the problem with your sugar. So I think if, you know, in an ideal world, if we had more time and everything to our you know, available to us, we, we should be spending far more time on addressing those lifestyle issues. If we're not sleeping. And especially if we're not sleeping. So yeah. tell us again, we need to sleep? We do need to sleep and an, uh, an adult needs about eight to nine hours every night. Mm. So it's really important to have a regular sleep routine. Um, and we, drinking milk and all these uh, hot remedies, milk's good. are they good? Hot milk actually does work. It contains a little tiny bit of something called tryptophan, which does actually help to go. induce a feeling of sleepiness. And um, not eating sugary stuff at night, no. kids and parents, because I found no. if I eat a whole chocolate cake at, say, 11.30 <laughs> at night, I'm like this, I go to bed, good night, everyone. And your eyes are ding. <laughs> you can't sleep, your mind's no. constantly working. Yeah, that's right. So it's really important to get sleep. Now, just quickly, you've got a book coming out in October, which I you're going to come back and talk about. I am, What's yes. What's that one all about? It's called Future Brain. Yep. It's how to design the brain we need for our future. Yes. Um, by addressing what we need to be doing with our lifestyle in particular right now. Dr. Jenny, you're doing the circuit as well as a public speaker. If people yes. want to check out more information about your website, what's the website? Website is my name, so simply go to drjennybrockis.com. That's D-R for doctor, Jenny with a Y, B-R-O-C-K-I-S. You've got that right. I saw it on the screen there. <laughs> well you. done. Thank you for coming in, Jen. Thank Always so a much, pleasure Jeff. to have you here. Now, I've got to duck off because I've got to catch some sleep. Okay. Thanks very much. We'll take a break and be back with more of The Couch. We're talking to another specialist, uh, Julie Meek, coming in right after this. Welcome back to The Couch here on Aurora Television, Foxtel. Time now to talk to Grace and Julie Meek is back to talk to her too. Over to you, Grace. Thanks so much, Fred. As Fred said, we're here today with Julie Meek, who is a dietitian. Um, Julie, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Welcome. Um, can you tell us a bit about uh, your background as a dietitian and what made you want to get into it? Well, I actually decided to be a dietitian when I was 14, which is kind of strange, I know. But I went to my guidance counsellor and said, what is that called when you help people eat better food? And he said, it's dietitian, and my path was set from there. So I had no doubt about what I was going to do. At the age of 14? At 14. That is very unusual. So I'm not sure what I would have done otherwise, but <laughs> luckily I was able to do what I wanted to, and I've loved it ever since. Wow. Well, that is very exciting and amazing. Um, so today we're going to be talking about stress levels and how people deal with them. In the modern world, obviously, everyone's lifestyles are far busier and, you know, people, instead of worrying about health and food, they kind of just reach for sugar or anything to kind of fill up the pace and just keep them going. Can you tell us about why that's bad and a, and a bit about stress levels? Sure. Well, when you get stressed and you get tired and you're feeling a bit eh, mm. you often reach around for things that might make you feel a little bit better. So you reach for sugar, which makes you feel better for about two seconds, or you reach for coffee, which gives you a boost of energy but doesn't necessarily last as well. Mm. And we get into those bad habits and then we start skipping meals, we don't take breaks, and all of those things come together to make you even more stressed. Absolutely. Like yesterday, I had a very stressful day and I ate about 50 Freddo frogs. <laughs> okay, there you go. It wasn't a good thing. No. 
Uh, so what do you suggest doing in, you know, when, when people wake up um, instead of just eating a giant bowl of cornflakes with honey or something fast, mm. what do you suggest doing? Well, I think starting the game right. So mm. when you get up in the morning, allow yourself enough time to actually prepare something that will make you feel good. And so rather than getting the cornflakes and honey, perhaps grab something like wheat bix or porridge or an oat-based cereal. More like feeling for the whole day? Way more feeling. Mm healthier for you mm. and does actually last you that longer time. So you might put some fruit on it, some milk, and then you've got a complete package. Absolutely. And so you're not reaching within an hour for something else that will make you feel better. Yeah, which is a really important point. Um, with all this stress throughout the day, people tend to get really wired up and don't really know how to calm down and not be so stressed. What do you suggest doing to help your body just relax? Well, first of all, having, you know, talking about what we do at the beginning of the day, if you start off in a, a bad way, what that means is you can just rush your way through the day, you don't take regular breaks, mm. you reach for things to get you through, which might be a, a coffee and that's about it, so you've skipped meals as well. Yeah. Your brain starts just winding down, so you're not making good decisions about things. And so if you focus intently for an hour and you do your task, whatever that is for an hour, you then take a five minute break. And if you do that consistently during the day, then you've always re resting, refueling, recovering in between your focus and concentration. And and what do you suggest for women? Because obviously we're very different to men. Uh, what do you suggest for women? Because obviously eating badly and stressing affects our hormones. What do you suggest we do? Well, when it comes to that time of month, we're looking for things like chocolate, lollies, and we're feeling a bit blah. <laughs> and often that's what we do actually reach for. Well, a little bit of that's okay. But then if you think about what could I have that's sweet that would satisfy that that hunger but mm. not be so bad for me so first of all you know maybe you might have a, a hot chocolate that you've made yourself so use cacao powder instead of using highly sweetened chocolate powder which is still really yummy it's delicious you're still getting that <laughs> that nice sensation but you're not getting all the the baddies yeah um you know instead of having a whole block of milk chocolate maybe choose a couple of squares of the dark chocolate i'm just thinking about all the times i've done this <laughs> which we all have yeah and so looking for alternatives so that we're not always going for the same old things that have a ton of sugar and a ton of fat. Absolutely. And this is all very important. And uh, people will probably want to know more about this. So you have your own blog and website and everything that people can go to. I do. Can I you do. tell us a bit about that? So things like uh, recipes, which people are often looking for quick meals and snacks, they're on my website. There's a blog that I write weekly and there's a newsletter as well that comes out about once a month. So all of those are available on my site. Well, I will be going there all the time. <laughs> you should. And you also have Facebook and you just have to go to Julie Meek. That's so right. Facebook, um, Instagram and Twitter. People Brilliant. connect with me on there. So juliemeek.com. JulieMeek.com.au. .au. .au. Yeah, okay, beautiful. brilliant. <laughs> well, that's great, and I really hope that you all take that on and go to Julie's website because she has a lot of great tips. And if you want that info, you can go to thecouch.com.au. Thank you very much, and back to you, Fred. You forgot to cover the, the symptoms. I was just waiting for Dr. Julie, I call her. <laughs> Dr. Julie. The symptoms as well. Just quickly, can you run through those symptoms? Of stress? Yes. What do we look for oh, yes. so we know someone's stressed? So the symptoms of stress might be things like... Um, you know that really anxious feeling, like the you're not sure what you're worried about, but you're actually worried about something. Okay, floor manager all the same time. At a time, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So that um, your heart rate can actually be really increased, yeah. like yeah. that kind of, uh, and feeling like you've had too many coffees all at once. Yep. That feeling as well. Some people get really cold when they're stressed. Cold. Yeah. Okay. So That's good to know. you know, and feel like their circulation is not working to the the best it so could stay be. Stay hydrated. Drink heaps of water. Really, really can that important. Also illness, just quickly. Absolutely. Yeah. So all of those things, when your body's under stress, it reacts by getting sick. And yeah. so if you're not actually looking after it, it's like, okay, fine, I will just get sick. Fantastic. You know, I do want to talk to you some more because I, I think there's a lot of, I reckon the industries, the food industries, should actually lower the sugar level in food yeah. without worrying. The, the government regulates smoking, drinking and everything else. Why not food? Absolutely. Regulate the sugar level and it helps people like me stop putting on weight and actually helps us lose weight or not put on as much. And want to eat more food. Exactly. juliemeek.com.au, always a great place. We've run out of time. I've got these fantastic games that I'm going to promote next week on the show, so stay tuned for that. We need to go out today with a fantastic young singer. Let me find my sheet because we're right out of time. Her name is Tegan Finnecane. Here she is, closing the show today. Check out the, the, the couch next week because we're going to give away these on the show. Until next week, have a great week, Australia. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Oh, sometimes I get good feeling, yeah. yeah. I get a feeling that I never, 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 never had before.
before, no, no. Tell you right now that I believe, I really do believe that someone's got to hold on me, yeah. Gonna put a hurtin' on me I 